My name is Jolie Colmer, I am 22 years old and I live with my parents in Bournemouth. I was diagnosed with Asperger's Syndrome, which is a type of autism, when I was two. Jolie's condition means that she struggles with the most simple tasks. Even this interview had to be done with cue cards, as Jolie needs routine and finds everyday conversations difficult. I was unable to speak until I was seven, preferring to communicate through hieroglyphics and sign language. I'm still unable to tie my shoelaces or do up zips or buttons. While I can prepare toast and some microwavable meals, I cannot cook anything else. For her, the big issues in the upcoming election are very personal. I have been discriminated against at school, work experience and during interviews. I believe that while there are policies in place to protect the disabled people, the reality is very different and disabled people are treated unfairly. It's not just Jolie's past experiences that have made her want to help others. It's also the prospect of living independently that is daunting for many young people like Jolie. Disabled people often need carers and can't always work. This means they move into assisted living homes on benefits. Such homes in my local area are in horrid estates where discrimination hate crime is high. They are constantly bullied by nasty neighbours and they live in fear every day. How can they learn independence if they are too scared to merely walk around in their own home? I still live with my parents. Moving out into a world of bullying and discrimination is a terrifying prospect. <laughs> I've been very lucky and have been able to join a local youth disability group. This group is the voice for young disabled people, our sanctuary, our refuge. Groups like this are vital for young disabled people, but with so many funding cuts, it's a constant struggle to keep them in place. I would love to see the funding issues resolved so that the amazing work that these groups provide can continue to change lives. Although Jolie is undecided about who to vote for, she's developing her own policies and putting them into action. I helped to design and implement the Safe Places scheme in my local area with my youth disability group, which has now been rolled out by other councils nationwide. The Safe Places scheme provides disabled people with local safe places to access should they need it. For instance, if they are bullied, become a victim of theft, or if they feel ill or anxious. Jolie is still finding her feet politically, but her message on rights for the disabled is very clear. Education is key to changing neg negative perceptions and giving people the correct understanding of this disability. If the people around me knew about my disability and properly understood it, I think they would have treated me completely differently. I just won a Generation 2015, Jolie Colmer from Bournemouth, doing a marvellous job there, I thought, putting things across the Safe Places scheme as well. Um, but um, Kelly Marie, she's still saying that uh, discrimination needs to be tackled. Mm -hmm. Legislation? Yes, we need legislation. She, it was interesting to see her mention disability hate crime. We're still seeing that crimes against people with disabilities are not being recorded by the police as hate crimes. And there is no legislation that but isn't is specifically this a targeted. But isn't a cultural thing well, as is much it, as is actually it, changing statutes? I think statutes. that we need to educate people a lot more yeah. on it. I, but I also think that we need a big campaign awareness against disability hate crime. I see far too many constituents who are impacted by it and it's not on. And the Lib, Lib Dems are the only party that are committed to introducing legislation on it. Hmm. Would be a good idea, wouldn't it? Oh, no, I think it's an excellent idea. Yeah. I mean, I'm a governor at a school where we have an autism provision and we very much integrate them into the school. Um, so people know exactly, um, you know, the young, young people in the school are, are growing up with people with autism. Yes. So, but I think that needs to happen more. We need to have many more children with and autism in mainstream school. Um, yes, and we, need, and we need the funding. It's extremely important. I suspect all of us have been doing the blind awareness where we've mm -hmm. been going around mm -hmm. uh, blindfolded. Um, and I'm hoping to go around in a wheelchair as well. So I think, you know, for candidates like this, it's extremely important to listen to people like Joni. We should be worried about the funding, though. She is. The, the big problem is the funding. I mean, you look at uh, West Sussex County Council, and uh, actually we've, uh, hate crime has been increasing massively in West Sussex with Sussex only Police. because they're only because, just recording. Well, they're, they're recording it yes. better, but there has yeah. been an increase in hate crime. Um, oh. And uh, you look at the, the Sussex Police have got 1,000 officers going over the next three years. Yes. So, you know, you've got this, this, it's fine saying we need to do this, but you need to have proper funding. In Crawley, we have excellent uh, groups working with the disabled and right across the spectrum of different communities. But unless that funding is there, and it's fine for the government to say, well, actually, we're going to cut local.
local government funding by 40%, but it's not our fault. It's you just can get on with the local the it's disability right. group. It's things like that which are being cut by They're local authorities. Cut first, yeah. But I mean, we've done very well in Portsmouth because off the record has kept going, and we've done that. We've managed to, you know, prioritise now. But I mean, obviously, we need the funding. We need to get the economy, and, and that once we oh, get we the economy the right, we can have more well. money. Okay. We, 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 I was at a meeting last night when we said that we're going to get more police officers in Portsmouth. How about that? Mm-hmm. Right, but that, the, that, that's what for, won the policemen. But the they haven't got as much said. money as they had. We had the Surrey um, yep. Police but and Crime Commissioner last week, and he was telling us about all the frontline officers who are going Absolutely. to have to go. Yeah. Yes, yeah, and we need to see more funding for the police. We need to see more funding for councils. The problem is that people are being cut back to the bone. I don't believe that finance should ever be an excuse for not having equality. And when it comes to disability, we ought to be investing more in doing it to prevent the crimes, prevent the impact on people's lives, and still pay off the deficit. Well, we can balance that by anchoring it in the centre ground, by not borrowing as much as labour, and by cutting as less than is, they Is do. it possible, Chris? It is. There's also creative ways. Well, you mentioned in Portsmouth in Crawley as well. It's actually working with the local councils to find small bits of funding that actually enable a lot of success locally right. as well. Yeah. So it's more creative thinking in the short term because the 40% cuts that come to local councils isn't going to be turned around in a quick way. Creative so we need to thinking, thinking sounds like a buzzword that people would use. Well, we're, d- we're doing it in Crawley and it's working. But, so. it, but I mean, you're right. You can use local charities, and there are lots of organisations that can survive off quite a small budget. Yes, but as long as they keep. They do even better with a bigger budget. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why we need to work on the economy.